Hey, what's up my construction entrepreneurs? Hey, I'm bringing you another video. And this one here, we're going to deal with some of the things, that, well, this is one thing that I see on estimates that is always missed. One thing I see on estimates that's always missed, okay? There's a few other things, but it varies. But this one, especially with the smaller contractors, I always see it missed. Now, I I, I mentor a lot of um, contractors, uh, especially a lot of concrete contractors, because that's my trade. So I help out a lot of concrete contractors. I go in, you know, I work with their team, I work with just them, and uh, work on estimating systems, uh, bringing it to a new program, um, uh, 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 figuring out percentages within their company, um, you know, cost percentages, whether that's figuring out, you know, how to do a, um, a patch for a contract that you have no idea where, where that patch is at, right? And some people are thinking of listening to this and thinking about like, what the mess are you talking about? So there's contracts out there. A lot of times when cities or, or large municipalities put out contracts, they don't have a location where that, where that patch is going to be. So they send out you know, square footage items for you to bid on, and you kind of have to figure out uh, a size crew, size traffic control equipment for the different size of holes. Now, a lot of those jobs have a lot of risks involved because you don't know where they're at. You don't know where they're at throughout the city. So what I see a lot of times is we miss truck costs and fuel costs. Okay, some companies I deal with, they're not large, okay? They may have one truck, they may have two trucks, they may have three trucks, right? But having that many trucks, we, that doesn't make us a large company. But still, we still have to account for those vehicles. Why? Because those vehicles still have maintenance, they still have registration, still need tires, um, still need maintenance. I don't know if I said that already, but they still need these things. So why not catch them, you know? Now, if you're a smaller company, then you can basically um, uh, do this two ways, right? You can figure it out in your overhead, put the cost in your overhead if you're a small enough company, right? You can even put the fuel in your overhead. Just est it'll be an estimated amount within your overhead. And then check out my, uh, my overhead video, which I'll link below. Or from good enough, I'll link here. If you don't see it here, that means I haven't learned that that skill yet. Anyway, so um, you can add it to your overhead, or you can do it this way that I'm about to show you. Okay, so let's get to it. All right, so I created a spreadsheet for us to go over real quick. There we go. Okay, let's make sure. Hopefully, my uh, everything is out the way here. Okay, so um, you see here we got trust truck cost summary report. Uh, this is for my YouTube family, and this is for January. Okay, so when you don't have a truck included into your bid, into your estimate, and also to know this, okay, there's a plug. All right, in my estimate sheet, okay, my estimating system, SES estimating system, there is a there is a column there where you can enter in your trucks and your fuel for your trucks, okay? So you don't have to do something like this. You just figure out what that number is, you plug that number in, and every time you do an estimate, because it's there on the estimates, within the estimate system, you would never forget to make sure you charge for your trucks. So let's go through this. So one here, I wanna, I want to make this larger here so you guys can see this here. Okay, so one here, we got the truck payments, right? And some of this cost, you got a yearly cost and you need to break down to a monthly cost, okay? And some of it is just a monthly cost, right? So as you see here, there's some columns where I broke down to a yearly cost, okay? So let's go through them. So truck payments, you got at $300, okay? The daily cost for that to you is $13.64. So I'm basically saying that's what you're paying for your truck that you have if you have payments. Okay, if you don't have payments, then you put the depreciation value there, 
uh, on a monthly basis, okay? That's what you put there if you don't have truck payments, okay? Uh, truck insurance, okay? I got it in at 250. You can adjust that, you know? Maybe you're paying 350, maybe you're paying 325. I don't know, but this is per truck. We're not talking about a fleet. We're talking about one truck. Okay, or maybe you got a car. Maybe you're small enough and, and you can do work out of a car or whatever you do, okay? Say you're, you're riding dirty and you're doing lawns out of your car. You're making it happen. Your truck insurance, your car insurance may be 150 or 180, okay? So I got that there at 250. The daily cost is 1136, okay? Maintenance cost, okay? I did a maintenance cost of a year, yearly cost at $2,000. Now, how I came up with that I have that here broken down here. Uh, I did eight oil changes at $50, which is $400. So I did eight oil changes, right? Um, uh, that's two per quarter, right? Also two, I did tires, mine tires at $1,500. Uh, I did other little things at $100, minor things. So I came up with $2,000 a year that you're gonna spend on maintenance costs, right? Um, uh, you may feel that it's more than that. Then plug a higher number in there, okay? Um, you still want to remember to be competitive, okay? Another tip here before I forget is this. If you, it, a lot of times you can come up with this number here, and then you also want to look at what a rental truck costs in your area, okay? And you may, if that rental truck costs in your area is higher than the number of your daily rate, your charge daily rate for that, then you want to plug that number in there just in case you may have to rent your truck. You may have to rent a truck because that truck is broken. Truck is down. Uh, maybe another crew has that truck. So you want to uh, and remember business is about thinking ahead. Business is about predicting and guessing uh, an educated guess. So Sometimes in my bids, even though I know I have that equipment, I may put a, the rental cost of that equipment in there just in case we have to rent during that time because I predict we're going to have a lot more work going on than we have now. Okay, so may, sometimes you might want to do that. Look at the rental cost. Uh, if the rental cost is more, plug in it. If it's not, then plug in your number that you have. Okay, uh, res, uh, maintenance cost two thousand. So monthly is one hundred sixty six. Daily is seven dollars and fifty eight cents. That's what you need to produce. Now, my daily is based on 22 days, okay? I have an average, this is what I use for all my estimates, anytime I'm calculating, okay? On the month, I calculate an average of 22 days working, okay, throughout the year. So I got an average of 22 days. You may feel it's 30, you may feel it's 28. Whatever you feel that number is, that's what you divide the monthly cost by to get a daily rate a daily cost to you okay so uh registration renewal okay um um yearly is four hundred dollars okay uh uh that's registration okay registration renewal is four hundred dollars uh yours may be five five hundred yours may be six hundred you know uh nonetheless i got four hundred dollars in there so monthly is three dollars and thirty three cents so every month we need to have that set aside for registration okay uh daily rate this is what i'm charging okay daily rate okay this is what i'm charging for that truck so the daily rate i'm charging for that truck is 56 dollars uh that's what i'm making on that truck per month is uh 1232 dollars so 1232 dollars i'm making on that truck a month right now some people may say hey t what if the truck breaks down, man? Do you need to do like t rent and buy something new, right? My boy say buy new, okay? You don't have to worry about those problems. But hey, what if we can't buy new? What if we have to buy used or will we have a used vehicle? Matter of fact, I'm a big fan of used vehicles. I don't like buying new because the value is not worth nothing when you drive it off the lot. So I try to buy it close to new, but not <clears throat> to use. But um, if you what, what if you have a blowout, uh, you know, head gasket or, or this and that? Well, you're already making twelve hundred dollars a month from that vehicle. As long as you have the jobs, this is what you're making from that vehicle. Okay, so if you can't make that work, then 
you know, the rest you need to you need to pull out of your 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 uh, your other costs, your gross costs. That's it. Okay. Um, if you feel you need more, then put more there. But you still want to have that competitive edge. Remember that. Okay. So be reasonable. Okay. So um, I got a daily cost of fifty six thousand dollars. How I get to that daily cost is that I'm making, I'm charging seven dollars an hour for that vehicle. So that's seven dollars, seven dollars an hour times eight hours. Okay, so I'm predicting my truck is going to be used eight hours. A lot of your trucks are used more than eight hours. It's used twelve hours a day, fourteen hours a day, because you got to work eight hours and then get into it from port to port, right? So you may plug in that. Okay, I got eight hours in there, so that's where I'm at per month. Okay, now um, all that up, all that totaled up. Per month is uh, 1982, $1,982. I need to come up with every month to make sure I pay everything that's listed on this list. So to do that, that means that I need to charge for my truck, okay? I need to charge $90.90 per day. $90.90 per, $90 per day. I need to charge for that vehicle on every estimate. So if I'm going to be out there on that estimate for five days, that's $90 and nine cents for five days. It's a daily charge. Okay. And if you're going to be driving more than eight hours or your truck is going to be in motion more than eight hours, right? Then you need to up that, that $56. Okay. You need to charge more and that's it. Now with the fuel, me, I just, I like, I like doing a uh, mileage rate, right? And usually I'll look at the mileage rate, the going mileage, the, the mileage reimbursement rate for your state, okay? Like for California right now, I think it's 56 cents a mile, okay? And that's what I'll plug in on my estimate. Um, if, if I feel it's going higher a little bit and that's not going to cover me, then I'll bump that number up, you know, by looking at gas prices where we at how much we're driving, the vehicle we're driving, and things like that. So I, that's what I do for fuel. You don't see fuel costs in here, but you can add fuel costs in here, okay? You have an estimated amount that you usually spend per month because you got a credit card that you use and you can look at that amount, then plug that number in here. You're confident on it, plug it in here. Other than that, I usually use a uh, percent per mile within my estimate system. Okay, so that's all I have for you. Hopefully this video wasn't too long. Hopefully you gained some information here. And if you did, make sure you like, make sure you leave a comment if you want to say something about this. Okay, all right. So um, my construction entrepreneur, so I'm gonna let you go with that. Remember, hustle hard, then hustle harder. See you on the next one.